Good. How are you? Hi. Hey, Bill. Officially. Now I got it. Oh, there. Okay. Or like, Call the meeting to order. Um, it is 6:31 p.m. Um, first item on the agenda is: Are there any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, we'll go to the next item on the agenda, which is conflict of interest disclosure. Anything? Uh, any potential conflicts of interest that anyone sees? Okay. Uh, moving on, next on the agenda is public comments, and I see there's a lot of folks here tonight, so thank you for, for coming. Um, we do the next on the agenda is law enforcement, and I'm assuming that's maybe what a lot of folks are here for. Does anybody have any public comment that's not related to law enforcement? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry? I'm thinking Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll echo that. Thank you. Um, and just for those that didn't hear, uh, someone was thanking Rick for the great work that uh, that he did. And I I ran into Rick. I don't know what night it was and what time it was out with the greater. And <laughs> and I said, I and I saw you one night. I don't know what time it was, but it was it was it was getting to be late. And I know that it was several hours later when you were on my road grading. So uh, thank you. Um, kind of a thankless job this time of year. Probably you don't usually wish that there was two feet of snow, but you might have in the last week or two. Yeah. Mm. So next on the agenda is law enforcement. And uh, we did have a meeting. It was two meetings ago. Uh, we discussed law enforcement. And, and I see the sheriff's here tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, where uh, both Orange County and Vermont State Police was represented um and and had some presentations and so you know what what we heard that night was that that uh folks in town wanted us to look into what some possible options were Am I missing something there no but right after you say your little spiel i want i want to correct something that was in our draft minutes because it impacts a law enforcement conversation do you want to do that right now yes all right go for it it's sorry a miss print or typo our the contract we've been offered by orange county sheriff's office is at 50 to eight dollars an hour not 68 dollars an hour okay so I just okay cool and what we're going to talk about i i put it in as 58 dollars yep i didn't know if there might be people here who read that okay sure. understood thank you um so we, we had a public forum we had a lot of folks here um that evening and, and what we kind of the way we I guess explained it that night was it was the beginning of a conversation and tonight is we're continuing that conversation what we heard loud and clear that night was that folks and, and i'm going to paraphrase and anybody else on the board please jump in um that, that folks wanted us to look into what our options were uh in terms of law enforcement obviously there was a lot of concern i i want to say the good news was there's been less but i think that there's been some incidents as of late in, in town just in the last few days um, and so what we were, at least in my mind, what we were charged to do with as a board was to look at what options we may have to increase law enforcement presence here in town. Um, we had had conversations, and I know, Sheriff, you weren't part of the conversation, Captain, tell him Captain Lenny, because I never get his last name right. Uh, we appreciate him attending. Um, and, and uh, you know, 
we we learned what there was for potential from Orange County uh, at that time. Um, we currently, or, or currently in 2023, and I think in previous years, we'd had a contract for $12,500 a year, which was roughly four hours a week um, in terms of controls within our community. What we heard was folks were looking for more. Um, and so if you, if did folks get a copy of a handout over there? And I apologize, it's a little, when you came in tonight, and if not, there's some more over there. Perfect. Do you mind handing those out, Kate? That'd be awesome. Um, so what we've done is we reached out um, at that meeting, folks, uh, Vermont State Police was here as well. Uh, folks there had asked us to reach out to both Royalton and to Windsor County. Um, and, and also there's been discussion since then with, with Randolph as well in terms of what options were out there for us to increase uh, law enforcement in the community. So where, where we're at and, and what's on that spreadsheet, and I apologize that the, that the printing of that is not clear, so we will go through it. Um, we've laid out kind of two, op uh, we've laid out a number of options, um, and some of those options could be with, with Orange County, with Windsor County. Uh, I, should, I should say that, and Kelly, I believe you also talked to or were made aware that Washington County does not have the ability to, to serve Chelsea. Um, Royalton does not have the ability to serve Chelsea. And our understanding, and, and the sheriff is here, is that Orange County had the ability to go up to $20,000 a year, which would be somewhere in the six and a half hours per week range. Um, but that would not allow for nighttime patrols is, is what our understanding was. Um, and one of the things we did hear loud and clear from the community that evening is they were looking for us to have some law enforcement presence in the evening as well. So again, as part of this ongoing conversation, and thank you all for being here tonight, uh, we had put it on our agenda, and I know we just put it out in the last several days of social media in terms of just letting folks know that we'd be having this on the agenda again tonight. And this may continue to our next meeting as well. But what we've done is we've laid out uh, a number of options uh, in terms of, in, in this, the, some of the board members, I sent this out yesterday, so some of them may be kind of seeing this or absorbing this for the first time. What we've laid out are several options. Um, there's kind of an option 1A, 1B, and I'll explain those to folks. Um, and then it goes down through seven different options or layers of enforcement that we may be able to have. I will say this before we get started, because on the far right of that spreadsheet, the, the sheet that you have is there's two columns. Um, one is the approximate the approximate um, taxes that would be need to be raised for a hundred thousand dollar home appraised value. The far right column is at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars appraised home. And that's just to give us kind of a context of what we're looking at. So with the contract that we've had this past year with Orange County, $100,000 home, that's $10 that you'd be paying. A $250,000 home, that's $24 that you'd be paying in terms of the taxes that we need to generate to offset those contracts. I'm going to just pause before I get too far into this to see if there's anybody on any other board members have anything that they want to add before we all walk through the options. Anything, any questions before we kind of lay, go down through the options here? Okay, if, if not, we'll, we'll go down through here. So, so what we've done, um, I will say that I, I've had a couple of conversations with the Windsor County Sheriff, um, who's expressed that they do have the ability to provide some nighttime coverage to us. Uh, we did receive a proposal from them, I guess, a, I guess it's kind of in the form of a draft contract, um, that laid out seven different, um, uh, potential uh, scenarios and understanding that Orange County has has at least to this point presented us with two options one would be uh, the continuation of our current contract which would be four hours per week at twelve thousand five hundred dollars or six hours per week um, at six and a half hours which would be approximately twenty thousand dollars so those are the two options that have been presented to us um, and then the other options and, and I'll just read them just real briefly in terms of what the county has said that they could offer as well. Um, four hours uh, a week at $16,000, eight hours a week at $27,000, 10 hours a week at 34000 
12 hours at 40,000, 20 hours at 67,000, excuse me, 32 hours at 108,000, and 48, uh, 40 hours at $135,000. So, if, so what this spreadsheet tries to do is there's two columns, one would be Orange County, um, and that is that is daytime, and then uh, on the to the right of that is Windsor County, which would be nighttime. So we would be, if in those scenarios, if we went down that path, we would be contracting for Orange County for daytime, because I believe that's what you currently can offer, and then nighttime would be Windsor County, and that's what they've offered to us. So there's various combinations um, on this spreadsheet, spreadsheet that I put together that I can't read right now. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess I'm gonna thank you, Jesse. Um, well, you know, if you don't want to share. We can, we can share. share. So part of this is the ongoing conversation. I mean, the, at least in my mind, the biggest thing that we wanna hear from folks is what, what do we wanna do? Um, as you can see on the spreadsheet, you know, we can go, we can go all the way, for, we can stay where we are, a contract with Orange County for four hours per week at $12,500. And I'm just going to use the $250,000 assessed value, just there's both on there. That's 20, that would be $24 uh, annually in, in property taxes. And we have options that range all the way to option 7B, which is $298. Uh, a year in taxes for the two hundred fifty thousand dollar home. That that option is would be six and a half hours with Orange County and forty hours with Windsor County. So that I mean, so we we go through extremes and there's a lot in between those two options. And and really, as a community, I think we just need to decide what it is what it is we think we can sustain. I know in a conversation I had, I think Jesse and I were having a conversation. I think about this in terms of what we can afford and, and not necessarily what I personally can afford, but we have a lot of folks in our community. We have a lot of folks that are retired and on fixed incomes, a lot of different scenarios. Um, I think that's something that we need to make sure. Safety is obviously a concern, but also affordability is a concern as well. So we put these options out here um, and, and we're really looking for, you know, tonight the board needs to have a discussion about these options and we're really looking to in, for input from from folks in the community as well. Um, whether or not we get to a decision tonight, we don't have to reach a decision tonight. Uh, I know I kind of whispered to Kelly right before we started, you know, we had 70 people here. I think probably the last time we don't have as many with the holidays, with the notice, we may defer and make a final decision at our, at our meeting two weeks from now. So um, I guess first what I'd like to do is just open it up to the board members and see if there's anything that I may have missed or if there's any questions or comments and then we'll open up to others as well. Thank you for laying it out like this. Very helpful. Just see these numbers. I mean, I think that we definitely need to go the route of nighttime patrol. I mean, I think it's just a matter of how many hours at this point we decide we think we need. Anything else? And we can always come back, but I just wanted to, the board seeing this for the first time, I just wanted to, sure. Go ahead, Emily. I'm just curious about, um, in regard to having some money, Windsor, does it need to go for a town meeting? Be voted on in a town meeting? Is this something that you all can do? Um, well, so we're putting together the budget um, right now. The budget that will be voted on at town meeting so you know we're, we're at a place there's a couple of things that have to be done one is we need we have contracts that need to be signed and two we need to build the budget and move forward and obviously you know the voters have a voice at town meeting as well so on that budget as part of the budget it'll have to be addressed but we, we're gonna we need to make decisions before that yes Fortunately, they can't provide us with any service plan. 
how to take those advantage who are working with your drive guide. So we need help with solutions to kind of those times. And again, we have a town that we need that are watching our hot works. That will step up if something goes wrong or someone who may be a big step up. Thank you. Kerry, just one thing, if, if I could, because I, I forgot a piece that I wanted to make sure folks were aware of, and thank you, you just triggered that in my mind. The other thing that the board has done um, is we reached out as well, and we're considering looking into, we're looking into options for security cameras as well um, on town properties. So that was something that we heard that night as well. Um, I think that's not tonight, is it? That's, it is tonight. Okay. Well, but I made a mistake. I thought he was on the Keith is here. Okay. All right. I he was on the agenda. Okay. Well, I think we can probably cover that under law enforcement because that's something that we were talking about yeah. as part of law enforcement. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so that was one thing that we did too. That's one thing we did as well um, was just looked into the potential and, and, and I apologize. I forgot that, that we had that here as well as to look at the kind of the security camera. So the, those that was another takeaway from our previous meeting. Sorry, Carrie. I just... And before we move forward, if you don't mind stepping up and talking closer so people on line can hear you, there's oh, like 10 people point. joining yeah. remotely that yeah. can't hear. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Oh, the, the, the mic that I have covered? Yeah, that way there. Yeah, yeah. it's certainly folks that are further towards the back if you would definitely. I guess my comment is to what you said about the break ins at night and the need. Oh, man. I live on Main Street. Next to the fire station, which is in this village, is a serious issue. And it, it's rare, you know, for a while. I appreciate it that we had the, um, the sign up that tells people what they're And I don't know if it changes, you can probably speak to whether or not it changes behavior to see whether or not people slow down when they realize they're going to get two miles over the speed limit. But you must see it too, Linda. At the fire station, the, the speeds through the village in the day are frightening, and and we have more and more kids on bikes, more younger families coming to town with young kids. We have the folks from Riverbend out for a walk, crossing the street. It, it's it's worrisome. But one of my questions is that um, has there been a breakdown of when, um, you know, I guess you. you you find out how many crimes are committed only when they're caught, right? Not when they're actually in progress. So is there a breakdown of what crimes occur during what time in the village? And I'm sort of curious to know if there's been a study of some, even a, a very informal look at um, whether or not we have an understanding of when things are occurring. We, we've had that discussion, I believe. They, yeah, please sit. First off, <laughs> thank you very much, Sure, sure, sure. If you don't mind, just, if you wouldn't mind, just so that folks can hear you, the folks that are online. Thank you. A little better? Yeah, thank you. First off, to, to assume that Chelsea is the only town in the area that's suffering the break-ins and the whatever else is happening is is not correct uh, if you had the opportunity to listen on the radio you'd see that almost every town around us all have the same problem they have break-ins uh, this, this afternoon we had a probable break-in in right on the uh, in washington uh, a guy drove into the yard uh, went up knocked on the door because there was no cars there and then the, for some reason either he heard the dogs or whatever and left that's happening all the time, whether it's Washington, Orange, or any other place. But to assume that with four hours uh, assessed for a contract, that we can be there at that particular almost ridiculous. I mean, if we were on for a 24-hour period, we'd have half a shot. But we're, we're not there for 24 hours. It's very difficult. And everybody's in the same boat. Now, I'm sure you listened to the state police the other day. They want absolutely nothing to do because they are so strapped. They're 40% down. We're, we're at least 40% down. Uh, Windsor is down too. 
And that's why I don't understand how they <laughs> offer some of these programs because they don't have that many people. Uh, but whatever, maybe they do have them hidden somewhere. But everybody is interested in these nighttime programs, these nighttime patrols. That's one of the things that we've been working on as a nighttime patrol. Um, we figured that we could put probably four to six hours during the nighttime with somebody. So that would be four to six hours during the evening. I'm not too sure if this guy is too interested in driving around at one or two o'clock in the morning. And I don't, I don't really know when half these crimes take place because we always, we're, we're reactive. We show up in the morning, crime is done. Somebody either broke into a camp or something during the midnight hour. So it, we're really in a tenuous position here. Um, I mean, I was, my thunder was kind of stole early on when you said that uh, it was $68 versus $68, which was the, the, the minutes of the meeting about a week ago or two weeks ago. And I thought to myself, who, who said that? Because we are $58 an hour. As far as I know, Windsor was 68, but I see now they're, they're 65. Yeah, I, I should have clarified that when, when I was going through that because Orange County, is at, for folks, is, is at 58 and in Windsor County, $65 an hour. Yeah, but I want you to know that whether or not Orange County gets the contract or Windsor gets the contract or anybody else gets the contract, we have no animosity with anybody. If, if, uh, if uh, Randolph gets it, or I don't know, is Randolph, Randolph throwing their hat? I'm not sure. No. No. Okay, well, if, if uh, Washington County or anybody else throws in their hat, they're more than welcome to use our office when we're not there. It's not like, uh, you know, you guys are out of here and we don't want to have anything to do with you. That's, it's not the way we work. If they need to use our lockup for anything, they need to use anything, we're more than glad to do that for them. But I was under the impression, at least from my captain, that the last meeting that you had, that the, you guys had, I say you guys, excuse me, the board had, had virtually decided on what they were going to do with the contract. So as a result of that, well, this is, this is just what I heard. As a result of that, we adjusted our other contracts that are now signed, reducing our hours in, that, in those particular areas, reducing our hours there so we could accommodate additional hours here in Chelsea, especially nighttime hours. So now we have contracts out there that are already signed already signed with lesser hours and so we gave away money out there so we could come in here to Chelsea and now I, I was I was I was kind of shocked when I heard well we haven't got a contract yet well I said well I, I'd heard that it was pretty much a done deal at the 19th on the 19th well apparently it's not but another thing you have to realize is statutorily we can't patrol after our contract is is dead and it died last night at midnight January 1st. So we have, you have virtually nobody here in Chelsea at this point. I told everybody that we would go anywhere on an emergency situation, but we're not going to be patrolling at all within the village because we can't. So I don't know, I don't know what, you know, I really wanted a definitive answer this evening. And I, I heard you say earlier on that you probably couldn't do that because there aren't, there aren't enough people in here. But at, at this point, you have. You have no patrolling at all. We understand. The only, only time you'll see a car is he's coming in for fuel, and that's about all you're going to see a car. So, yes, sir. Did we have any patrol before? Oh, yeah. We have mucho hours. We have a lot of hours. And people are. All those guys are all over the courthouse. Oh, what we, well, we well, remember now we have a contract with, this, with the uh, judiciary. We have to supply three people there every day. Right. Sure. So, Three people every day, five days a week. So you can see what that must do to us. So what does that mean to you for decades for Toronto? We have two, one on the north side and one on the south side, or east and west, whichever you want to call it. So what about if you don't, can you go back to these other towns and adjust your contracts? No, contracts are signed. They're done deals. They're done deals. Yes. So, I don't have money outside of the most or whatever. I thought people no that's 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 accurate no that, that was our understanding as yeah well. okay. that's accurate okay. right so so sorry i think kelly has a uh, i am the one that's been speaking with your office and i'm very confused that you're telling me right now that you can provide nighttime hours yes so that's as of now you can provide nighttime yes. hours yes we have somebody that's agreed to do that, and that that was a fairly recent 
reaction, by the way, because we'd heard that the town was interested in nighttime patrols. Everybody's interested in nighttime patrols. So I, I do understand that you had, I understood that that there is an individual that will do nighttime patrols, yes. but was not aware at all because I specifically asked a couple of times very clearly, but you do not have the services set up to offer that to us starting on January 1st. The answer was no. The answer is yes now. So you have dispatching and everything ready to roll now. Dispatching is done after after hours through Barry City. We contract with the city of Barry for our communications. That's new information. Well, I didn't I've been kind of behind the eight ball. I had major surgery at the end of November. I no sooner came home after I recuperated and got COVID. So I got kind of lost on the contracts. I just came back uh, a little bit towards the end of last week. So I've been kind of playing catch up on this. So I'm not exactly sure what was said in the last meeting. I did go over the minutes, um, but I, I can assure you that we have we have somebody that's amenable to working after hours nighttime. And actually he's been putting in some nighttime hours already in Williamstown. The previous yes. meeting said eight to four. Is nighttime beyond four or well, it's going, it, I hate to tell you exactly what time they are. Everybody's interested in dark hours. Everybody's interested in hours uh, after uh, everybody's home from work or whatever. So I'm assuming it would probably be something like seven to midnight or something like that. I I don't know about it. I, don't know. I think the state runs their shift. I was a trooper for 30 years. I think they run their shifts till about two or two thirty in the morning, and after that, there's nobody there. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. So those hours aren't aren't definitive yet. I think that would depend a lot on what you want. So we'll see if we can get that. Everybody's short staffed, including you. Yes. What happens if the one guy who's willing to do nighttime patrols decides to leave? We're in trouble. And then our contract, then we have no nighttime. My comfort zone with Windsor is that they have more staff. Mm -hmm. And if they lose somebody, there's somebody else to cover. So we continue to have nighttime policing. Well, uh, I hate to say anything about against them. My first off, they're from a, a, a rather rural uh, city type area, or well, really a rural type area. They don't really know Chelsea. They don't know the roads in Chelsea. They don't know how to get around in Chelsea. They don't know the people in Chelsea. They don't know a farmer from a bus driver. So I, I think they're kind of on the left foot. Uh, they're still from Vermont. Well, they're still from Vermont, but White River Junction is not is not Chelsea, Vermont. So I, I, and I, and I don't know what they can actually produce during the nighttime hours. If they can produce whatever, and, and you've done due diligence, I'm certainly not going to say, well, you can't do that. It's not right. That's up to you. If you're doing due diligence, and it seems like you are with the folks here, you're doing due diligence, and you choose Windsor, then that's fine. That's fine. As I said, we'll we'll cooperate with Windsor in any way we can. I had just ask you, yeah. so when the state police officer was here at the last meeting, he said that when an arrest takes place, it requires two officers. No. So if you have one officer on duty, you don't feel you have the same. Trust me, I, I was in the state police for almost 30 years, and I don't think I ever arrested anybody with two people. We've always done our own. Nowadays, they have cages, they have all kinds of things, and you're right, a lot of times they do have two people. I think it had I to think do that's with a waste. process. I think it had to do when they had to take somebody in and the processing was taking place that one person would not be left alone. Well, so, especially if they were um, they escalated. Well, it's it's a problem because if there's only two people on a ship and most of the time in, in the in the uh, Berlin area, if they're lucky, they have two people and a supervisor. So if one of those persons happens to grab a DWI, he has to bring him into the office, they have to process him, then from there he Oftentimes, we'll have to transport them all the way to St. Johnsbury. So that leaves one guy and a supervisor. So, you know, they're, they're pretty much in the same shape as everybody is. They just don't have the people. And despite the fact that they're offering a huge bonus sign-on, they still can't get people. And some of the people that they get may not be of the quality. One of the jobs I had when I, when I, I did leave the state police was working uh, at the academy uh, doing processing for recruits and so I got a chance to talk to a lot of these people and, and, and hiring a lot of these people and I was very careful who I hired 
And as a result of that, a lot of these people went their whole career, 20, 25 years, and then retired. And nowadays, I see people, and I'm not court a lot. I see people who come in, they've been on two or three years, and you say, how you doing? And they, they can't see the end of the tunnel. They're already thinking about retirement. They've only been on three or four or five years. They have no idea. So, I, you know, it's really the sign of the times, and we all have to agree. Kids today are just not interested in working. Drive down through Barry City. If you can't find 10 signs saying, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. And where are all these people? Where are all the kids? Is it, is it because we're a different generation? Probably. Our generation is a working generation. But this new generation coming on, it's difficult. You can't find people to work. I mean, anybody here that has a business can, can understand that. I see Linda smiling. So, so I, I want to just, so this is good information. Thank you. Um, what we've provided, what we've put together for tonight is the information that we had available to us um, at the time. It sounds like there may be other potential for us. Um, we have not seen anything from Orange County in terms of uh, anything documenting or proposal or in communication, understanding that there may be other options out there for us. And, well, I, I, and I'm it, assuming options will come from you. You tell us what you want and we'll see if we can do that. Well, but we'll, we'll bend over backwards. In, in fairness, sir, I think we've had a lot of conversations, Kelly and I, with your captain mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful to not express too much frustration. Mm -hmm. Um, because we have had that communication. We've done the best that we possibly can for our residents in that communication. And it seems like there may be some miscommunication that is not our responsibility. And I will say that it is a little bit frustrating to me to hear you say we turned down other contracts because you heard, heard somewhere that we had already decided on contracts. We have had several meetings. We've been very transparent to our community We've been transparent as a board. We've been very clear in our minutes, except for a typo on dollars per hour. Um, and, and we tried to do that. And, and I know personally, I've had, I think, three conversations with your captain, and I think Kelly's had probably many more than that. And so we, we want to work with you, but it's a little bit discouraging, I guess, if you will. And, and so for us, what we made, what our residents made really clear, and what I think the board summarized in our last meeting was we were looking for what resources could be out there to increase patrols more in the nighttime than in the daytime. So I guess what well, I'd like to understand is, and we'd like to understand in writing, if the board agrees with me, what can Orange County provide to us? Right. I don't expect an eight hour night shift. It's just not going to happen. Under, understood. So look, what we're looking for is to understand. So, so with that, what I'd like to do is with the options that we have for folks to be considering tonight, knowing that there may be more, and I, I think I can speak for the board and saying that we'd welcome additional information in writing from Orange County on what you could provide to us. Um, I, I led with, I don't think we're going to reach a decision tonight. Um, and, and you made a very good point um, in that, in that I know we as a board at our last meeting recognized that this meeting was January 2nd and on January 1st, our contract expired right. and there were, you know, there was risk associated with that in terms and, of patrols. And I actually had it, and maybe Emily wants to speak to it. We actually had a, con a conversation about that. Right. And I, I just wanted to say that I really was doing due diligence, all of you regarding the Orange County Sheriff's <clears throat> I do have to say that because George was either battling COVID just as major he was out of home. We tried to keep him disconnected, if you will, and that's probably not the right word, but um, not so much stress. Sure. He, you know, all of these things were bubbling up. Yeah. And I know for a fact that the captain, Lenny Zanonis, <laughs> did speak to an officer about working the nighttime patrols and the officer was all for it. And and his reaction was, how many hours can I do? But how he, he was there he enthusiastic, let's put it that way. But yes, we did have a conversation. I think that there has been a little bit of a miscommunication 
tweets, some of them, uh, as well as here, or misunderstand because, yeah. But I only know from what I hear in the office sure. that Understood. everybody wants what's best for this community, whether it's having Windsor come in or not. Um, and Joe, the sheriff, has welcomed that. That's what you want. That's fine. Like you said, no animosity at all. So, so we're, yeah, Chelsea's our hometown. I just yeah. want to make a comment on what you have here. Sure. Um, I, it seems like it's obvious, both from a fiduciary or financial point of view, because Orange County is less expensive to hire per hour. Windsor, if that's an opportunity, it seems like that's to do more than four hours or to do the 6.5 that we ought to shoot for that. And also for the reasons that George said that, um, you know, they're more likely to know our, our community. And those are important things. But having said that, it seems like the other important thing is just getting feet on the ground. And if, and if Windsor County can can supply it, then then you know, it seems like we ought to go here first, figure out what's there, and then and then fill in the holes with whatever Windsor can offer. And in terms of hours. Yeah, like you like you said, Kevin, you know, you I well Kevin, but all of you I know are trying to balance it from a budget point of view. And so anyway, so I'm not sure where I would I know where I might land personally, but for the town I'm I'm not really sure what the best. What was one of the options Windsor working the, the night shift? I'm sorry. What was was one of the options Windsor working just the night shift? That was the, that, that was one of the, the things the, that you the only know. options that we have on here is Orange County daytime, Windsor County nighttime. I just did. because that well, as of yesterday when I put this together, that's how I understood that Orange County could provide daytime services. And the conversation that I had had with Windsor County was they could provide more services, but if Orange County could provide daytime services, that's a decision the board would have to make. But what we needed to understand is. What can we get for nighttime services based on the info we receive? So, Kevin, maybe George, what 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 does nighttime patrols look like? What is that? What happens? First off, let me say something before I go too far in this nighttime patrol. If I was a burglar, about the last thing in the world I'd want to do it is in the dark when I'm worrying about felonies or people being in the house breaking in. When I want to break into a house, some people are at ten o'clock. <laughs> yes, at ten o'clock in the morning when they're gone to work. That's when your beanies are going to happen. That's when your camp's going to be broken into. Not going to be 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody knows that you walk into a house at 2 o'clock in the morning in Vermont, get your head blown off. People know that. There's guns in all the houses, so they're not going to take that kind of a chance. Their best time is during the daylight hours. So, well, but during the daylight, you're able to be seen. The people who are doing it are well, paying attention to camps that are empty, and then they're doing them at night when it's dark. And but you see people there who are the at, I know is, the is night. Are not able to do daytime patrols there. I, I believe that they could provide us sure. daytime, but the, the conversation was, was around that. Well, and to the sheriff's point, I mean, we, but, you know, I, I don't want to speak, speak for the whole board, but we want to respect the fact that Orange County is headquartered here. And Again, has anybody looked at the reports to see when the, the cars have been stolen one time a day. Is there a, is there a, uh, there an app? You know, the brand of their car was too in the middle of it. So, sorry, Linda, I, I didn't uh, see your hand up. Oh, yeah. Well, one of the things, um, I happen to be out of the box. I think this community is more alive at that time than it is during the day. There are so, cars, there's cars down at the sewer plant, there's cars up at up in, where up in, used to be at the store up there. They're all over the village. They're not getting here. I mean, it's it's like all kinds of stuff is going on. Um and I do know, and, and this is the only thing I'm not telling us to spend more money, but I can tell you there is not a single incident the state police response to this us. Actual. We're talking two cars, Linda, or two people in the car? Two cars. Uh, I think, I, no, I, I think what it is, is we're talking about a whole different uh, group of people we're dealing with. These are not, these are people that have guns. I mean, you just cannot trust anybody 
So patrol means like they're driving around or they're just available yes. if there's a problem. No, they're driving around. It would, it would, patrol will be driving around. I think that's our understanding from Captain Lenny. I just he told me I could call him Captain Lenny because I, I messed up his last name, but but also my conversation with the Wizard County Sheriff as well would be it would be patrolling. So my biggest question is I don't know how many went to the Orange County meeting, but uh they sounded pretty dug in as to what their budget was going to be. And I believe you said that if their budget passed, it's the end of Orange County Sheriff's Department. Um, <laughs> that if their budget, you mean if the state police took over Chelsea? No, 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 no. If the Orange County prepared to oh, 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 oh. the budget, because they have made such cuts that that the end of Orange County Sheriff's Department. I'm not privy to that. So, so I, know, I know we have a contract with the courthouse, but uh, you, you're talking about the courthouse being moved from Chelsea to elsewhere? The, 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 the county budget. Oh, well, the county budget is devastating. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to pull any punches. The county budget has been cut about 175,000, and so some of these cuts, some of these cuts are very detrimental to the department. No question about it. Yeah. Uh, and so we're working. We're working with the selectmen. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you got the package that I gave here last Friday, which indicates that on uh, Thursday night we're going to have a meeting uh, via WebEx about our uh, our budget and and what is being offered by the by the uh, side judges. And we want to challenge a lot of things that are in there. Stuff that was just simply carved out for. I, don't, I have no idea other than oh, this is a tax saving thing. This is a tax saving thing. Well, it's it's maybe a tax saving thing, but you know we're we're on a critical budget, and, and if, if some of these things do pass, Linda, certainly is going to be difficult. But whether or not it's a total demise of the department, I'm yet it's yet to see. I don't know. They they may be amenable to some changes. We're hoping that we can get enough public support uh, so that they will change their proposed budget. And put things back in that they simply took out because it was a quote unquote a tax saving measure. Now, I'm all for tax saving measures because I'm a taxpayer, not in this town. They said was their interpretation of state tax. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. I stole V. Lamoille. I mean, and that's a very. <clears throat> so we, we definitely, this is good conversation, but one of the things that we wanted to get to was the options that we laid out. Get some feedback, and I know that there may be more options coming in, um, and, and I don't want to cut. And certainly want to get to your question, but I, I, I'd like to get us back to the options that we've got out here and presenting. We're really looking whether the options are Orange County, Windsor County, nighttime, daytime. We're trying to hone in on what does our community feel that we can afford is is really where we want to get. So uh, I want to put that out there, but I want to recognize you had your hand as well. So, 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 so these are just the control of the contract, correct? Yes. Okay. So in your select board meeting from the 19th and uh, we talked about it with Palmer he had said that you can do contract hours and they could possibly do additional hours with the like, governor having safety money and rent sure. money and stuff like that so that's not right it's possible they, they could do some extra hours holiday yeah. time and, 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 and I'll, I'll read to you what's at the top of their contract is that is that yeah. hopefully what how it got paraphrased into this contract so the, the proposal from from Windsor County oh, okay. is, is just in, and I'll, I'll read to you that it says, um, you know, patrol hours would be billed at $65 an hour. They could start immediately. We also would supplement with Governor's Highway Safety Patrol Grant hours, thus adding extra, quote, free coverage for the town, is, is the way it read. So, and again, I'm not trying to shut down conversation. We just want to make sure we get a chance to kind of hear what these options, you know, hear from you in terms of what the options are. I mean, there's, this is this is significant. Um, this is a this is a big decision. There's a lot of big decisions. We got to go through our budget tonight. There's a lot of big decisions. Welcome you all to stay in those as well. You know, how, <laughs> anybody that's been on the roads, how much should we increase our travel budget to? Um, <laughs> I mean, but but this is you know, and, and it's all it's all very important. Obviously, this is something that's very forefront right now, especially the safety and the crime that we've had going on. So, really looking for feedback from from folks in terms of what some of these options are, especially the dollars. Yes. So, like Linda was saying, 
a lot of the stuff happens at night because I'm up all night. And I live over on Riverside and I can hear the traffic like bombing down through town and everything. Yeah, but, but I come home Wednesday nights around 10 and there's a lot of traffic parked up here. And I know a lot of them see them, they got their cell phones in front of them. I know they're using the Wi Fi, but when there's their cars just sitting there in the corner, no screen being seen. And they park out here, they park here on the side, they try to park back farther on this side of the common street light on that side of the road. But there is, there's a lot of traffic going out, coming off 113, heading down the other way for, for nighttime. That's 10 o'clock on a Wednesday night I can come through. That's a lot of traffic for this town at this point. And I know it's cheeky, it's not like I moved here 25 years ago. It's a lot different. I left my door on lot, I can do that here. I live out and I'm going to walk down here in town and I'm going to be in my car as I'm going to drive. It's just, it's not the same. You have to adapt to change that because it's not the good old Chelsea anymore. And you have to be more diligent and we have to take care of it. My personal opinion is if Windsor all together, it'd be one big word for the town to take, take care of. And you now they can do more hours guaranteed that they're not just going to sit over the sheriff's station and just sit in the building and run. I mean, I've seen Orange County and Williamstown one day just sit at the bottom of town of uh, Williamstown Road, just sitting there. They're not patrolling, they're just sitting there. I went all the way, get all my right around. I come back, they're still sitting there. So what are they doing just sitting there? They're not patrolling Williamstown. So are they going to patrol Chelsea? No, they're going to sit that unit building over there and do that. I, I will say that the invoices that we do get from Orange County breaks out where they are, where their stops are, when. So we, we do get detailed invoices as to what they are doing. But see, if we do, we'll go with all Williamstown, then one paperwork that I don't know who, do you know who can or somebody, that it's less paperwork by our town officials. We're not going to do two paid order. We don't have to cut two checks. You know, not really a problem with paperwork. Well, still, it's, you know, less people have to do in the long run. Thank, thank you. Carrie, Carrie, I know you, and, and we didn't really answer your question. I know at one point I do not have the daytime, nighttime, and I forget right. who was here. Somebody did have that breakdown for us at one point. I, I think that would be helpful in making a decision first of all the other question i have is you had mentioned cameras which are open for discussion as yeah. well and has it been discussed where they might be and also do we know them to be a deterrent um, if people know that there are cameras on the common or there are cameras that um if we were talking about the upper up property where i know that people are sitting i've heard of neighbors um it's private property Right. So we have to permission. Anyhow, I'm curious about the cost of that. And I'm curious about where they might be placed. And I'm also curious as to whether or not they're true deterrents of crime for people. So I work in the neighborhood of town that has town cameras. And we may have the cost, I do not know. So they are a deterrent. They do capture crime. They have solved crimes. They have, them in their, they have them on their main streets, they have them on their public buildings, like their record cards, like stuff like that. And they are a deterrent. And there are some of them are are well known, and everybody goes where they are. And there's some that they're kind of hidden. Well, so, you know, yeah. use when, you know, after a so, 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 Carrie, the police department and the town So, Carrie. We, we do have a gentleman here tonight that's going to talk to us about security cameras and what they've looked at but, uh, once we get through this piece. So if we just, no, no, it's, a, it's an excellent question. So I'm not, I'm not trying to shut that conversation down. Um, that's like, that's the next level of what do we want to invest in as a community? Um, but I will say, and we will get to that, but I will say that we've, we've looked at all town properties that we have in terms of potential cameras. So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment if that's okay. Um, are there are there other thoughts you know and I, I know probably nobody wants to raise their hand and say yeah i want the 72 dollar option but, but 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 to be honest it would be easier if you did 
Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just given the given the problem that we're faced with, I guess I would shoot for I don't know maybe option four B or or three. I mean, you could go for three B, but for another you know eleven bucks, you get a little more. And that's it. Seems like I don't know unless unless you want to try to go to to the town with the highest option and. I mean, honestly, the highest option would be that's what we all love to have, right? But if that's reasonable, but you know, maybe shoot for the middle. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows it's a it's a it's a problem that we can do something. So, so just to it just as a point of discussion, the the option that the cage has put out there would be you know six and a half hours and twenty thousand dollars with Orange County. 20 hours at sixty seven thousand dollars for windsor county whoops no i lied I'm wrong line six and a half <laughs> my glasses i need to go keep going back and forth six and a half hours and twenty thousand with orange county 12 hours and forty thousand with windsor county for a total of 18 and a half hours of of patrol on a weekly basis which would be sixty thousand dollars annually and and what that just and just using that as an example roughly that's about 115 dollars looking at Gail, but I think I did this right. $115 annually for a $250,000 home, which again, going back right now, that's 24, that's $24 in the contract that we have now. So it'd be about a, that would be an increase of about $90 on tax rate for that, for $250,000. More than what we're paying. If you had a $250,000 home, you'd pay $90 more taxes. That These are approximate numbers, but. On top of the state it's going to take place. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's no secret, and you're all welcome to stay. We're going to go into our budget later because between this meeting and our next meeting, we have to finalize our budget, and there's a lot of line items that are that are going up. Scary. Unfortunately, yeah. And it's scary, as you pointed out, for people on fixed incomes. Their income is going to go up, so that extra that 153 bucks a year it's is, real. is a dent. Yeah, absolutely. So the 12 hours in that option is, is that would be nice. That's nighttime coverage. That's 12 hours a week. 12 hours a week, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the option for, I just use that as an example because Kate brought it up. It'd be six and a half hours Orange County daytime, 12 hours Windsor County nighttime based on the information we had going into tonight's meeting. I live in the village for the last year. I commute six days a week, year round. And I've yet to see an Orange County car on the road other than a call me get me up here. So I don't know what they're doing or what they're being paid to do. I would not invest any more money in Orange County. Any other thoughts or comments kind of on these options that we've laid out? I would agree with Kate shooting for the middle, you know. But then putting it out to the bigger, the larger community. Right. And if it's working, we can all increase it. You know, if we say this is working, right? Work these yes. That might be a good bargain. You're saying, yeah. And if it, I mean, from my perspective, I, I, it seems to me that if the Orange County Department can start filling, filling in more, then maybe they need to go with more or, or out they, they and, and you know what we're what we're talking about are one-year contracts and any other thoughts on the various options would, would you mind would you mind coming forward thank you we stand up from everybody. Sorry. Come first getting me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we do want you to come back. <laughs> I, we'll see. Uh, I think you said that the, the hours in the contract that's proposed right now are 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. It's 7 to 4 or 8 to 4. Um, it's 8 to 4. 8 to 4. Um, I, my only comment is I, I first think you'll, this is great, uh, but we're looking at a number of hours to cover we're trying to fill the 122 hour gap in potential coverage at 40 hours is good but i i just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that you know, we're skewed towards the not really covering a large percentage at all of 
of the time that is needed. Um, and I would like more coverage. Um, I personally feel very safe. I'm strategically located as close to the sheriff's office as humanly possible, so people don't mess with the sheriffs. <laughs> but um, it's it's I, I I don't balk at many of the numbers, but when I started looking at the math of hours offered versus hours needed, it's it's a small number. Thank you. Thank you. I will admit, as a new board member, I was shocked when I learned that our contract was only four hours a week. So yeah, I, I echo that thought. And in, in defense of daytime hours, um, I will tell you a, a place that it's really gets hit hard. And yeah, we're not talking about the drugs and whatnot. But our schools need more protection. Uh, on, I would say, a pretty regular basis, I will hear the state needs to call teachers on Chelsea. Uh, because a parent who is either high on drugs or intoxicated is not to pick up a child. And teachers shouldn't have to deal with that. And the option of having somebody around for that is a good idea. And I think that that's one aspect of our public safety that we haven't all thought of necessarily. But Do we have a resource officer here in Georgia? Not anymore. That thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Linda. Yeah. And any other thoughts on these options? And if not, uh, I think we haven't met, but I was hoping that you might be willing to go up and, and give us a little bit of an overview of what you looked at, prices, and those kinds of things. If you yeah. Can go. yeah. Sure. We, we we appreciate you being here. We we appreciate that you you've recovered and you're back, you're back in town. So, so yeah, thank you for being thank here. So I guess you you've spoken with Bill. Thank you for being yeah. here. It sounds like you've looked at some properties. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, so we all. Um, yeah, so my name is Keith Brockwood, uh, resident of Williamstown, been in the state pretty much my entire life and I've been in the security industry for close to 30 years. Um, we do a lot of resident, not a lot of residential, a lot of commercial, some residential cameras, broker alarm systems, uh, intercom system, global, just licensed, insured, all the good stuff. So, uh, I know Bill and uh, I think you're going to need to speak up. I'm guessing the folks in the back yeah. can't hear you. So he had asked me to look at some town properties with uh, uh, emphasis on surveillance you know, cameras. So that's what I did uh, a few weeks ago. I went to the uh, water treatment plant, went to the highway garage, I went to the old highway garage here, of course, the transfer station, and also um, talked to somebody at the treatment plant about the pump houses, the source of water for the town. So I gave them a, a ballpark estimate on what what it would cost for you know general surveillance of those areas. Uh, basically, the treatment plan would have a couple of cameras. I don't, I don't remember exactly the count, but um, <clears throat> highway garage would have a few cameras, <clears throat> kind of a few cameras everywhere. Really, is what it boiled down to. And uh, all these cameras have <clears throat> infrared, so they're they're decent at night. They're not. You know, nothing's perfect, obviously, but a decent at night time. Uh, we record if there's motion, which is really kind of ideal if you want. Uh, pellet boiler. Yeah, that, that's our pellet boiler. It's, it's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, Keith. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, so uh, we looked at those kind of areas that, that I was asked to look at, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's you, you can't you can't get everything, but it's better than nothing. And cameras are a good deterrent, uh, especially with infrared because they have like little red light that you and I can see. So uh, it would be good. You would get some, you know, especially like cameras in this building and the old garage. You get some of the, some of the uh, one ten here, the roof passing through town. You get some coverage there. Uh, the other areas. You get get so much of that, but 
I think for the price you came up with, I think it's in my mind pretty affordable because we do we do cameras from four houses in the state, and you for the price that we gave you guys, we can't even touch a four house for that. So, in in the price was like, if I'm recalling, was somewhere thirty to thirty five thousand dollars. Is that correct? I don't, I don't know. If the, I didn't. Yeah, I just went through it again really quick, but it's it's in that yeah, order of magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I broke them up by by building. So here's the new highway garage, here's the old highway garage, here's the library town hall, here's the water treatment plant, whatever. So that's, that's how I broke it down. I'm just curious, would we would it be? Oh, I'm sure it's possible, but does it make sense? I guess to look at the potential for putting some of them on maybe private like i'm thinking of you know a, the old up of store i get it you have to have the landowner's permission right. but i mean does that yeah. happen is that possible or not i mean i think that really more falls on a landowner issue yeah. at that point well you need, yeah. you need power you need you right. should have internet you need heat obviously yeah. so but they could potentially hire you to do it yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, we, what we, I, I think the conversation we had, and again, anybody jump in, was looking at, you know, in, in the primary example was whoever shot the windows out of Will's store and shot at the building over here, literally were crouched down to the handicap ramp out here. Yeah. And so that was the, okay. So I, I think the, the, the general thought for us was, you know, let's see what we can do in and around our, our public spaces, but it starts to get, Coverage, you know, the old town garage provides some coverage. You might not get here right in the center of the village, as an example. The sewer plant, somebody brought it up earlier. Get some coverage down in that area. Obviously, we have a lot of assets at the town garage um, that it'd be good to make sure we knew what was going on. Um, and, and, you know, and I know Karen has mentioned and others have two security of this building, just having cameras when people, even when people are here, would be a good thing to make sure we have. So, and again, I don't know. So that that's where we're starting. That was our kind of our starting point, Kate. Was like, what what does make sense for us, and what could we do? And I know I know when when Bill brought these to us before, I think the board had different questions for Keith in terms of how does this work, and what do we need, and are there servers, and how long does it get stored? So I don't want to. I know other board members had questions, so or maybe not. Maybe I'm, yeah. I think one of our big questions was, what is data storage for these videos? usually look like when you uh, do it uh, so so if the cameras are recording on motion it depends on how much motion you have is the, is what it comes down to so essentially i think the every every building that we loaded you something that has a quote unquote server it's just a box that has hard drives that records the footage from the cameras and that's included in these costs okay uh so probably your between two to four weeks is probably a safe estimate of but you might have more, might have less. It just depends what there is for activity, traffic. Uh, there's no like annual cost. There's no like monthly fees. There's none of that stuff. So, so this is this is it. That's it. It's like okay. one time. That was a question. Yeah. Is there yearly service or anything that we would have to add or updates to the software? Not all the right word, you guys. There's really, there's really not. And then somebody would be need to be trained to access the recordings yeah. and interpret what it is they're seeing. Right? Yeah. So, in other communities, who typically does that? Uh, so we have cameras in Williamstown at the uh, public safety building, at all the schools, at uh, the town office, and they, of course, our public safety things. Uh, used to be the EMP guy. And he's they're gone now. So uh, uh, I really, I think it's going to be like the town manager's assistant that does like town hall and the home safety building. And then uh, the schools have, uh, I think the schools mainly lean on their IT or sometimes facilities people and sometimes principals too, just depends what the issue is. It's vandalism if it's a student issue. Or anything else, but, uh, so just, I guess, kind of depends, but it's, it's not difficult. It's, Maybe a couple hours of training. You can get it on your phone if you wanted it, laptop. Well, that, that was a question. So, 
that I had was the accessibility of it. They could be stored for two to four weeks, but if someone's sitting here or if someone was, you know, someone was looking at it at home or whatever, they they have to have Wi-Fi, um, and then um, there's an app or whatever they load on a laptop, yeah. a phone, or whatever, free, yeah. and, it, and, it, and that's great. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think the quotes had monitors listed as an additional like two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Could they all be accessed on one, or would we need one at each location? You don't. You don't need one at each location. But that, that's what the price was. If you wanted to, if you had somebody working at the water treatment plant five days a week, and you wanted that person to see the cameras up there, that's all. Okay. Okay. So that you can just look and see what's going on on the. These are guys logging on your phone from, you know, from your house. Live, live stream for the community what's happening outside the town hall. Are there other questions? I know we had a, a set of questions that we wanted to. I mean, the, at least for me, this is helpful. These quotes in, in the number of cameras are clear here, but it's there's no monthly fees. There's no, there's no service costs. There's nothing like that. We own them. Basically, we own them outright. If something went wrong, just your company, you know, we could hire you to come back and service them, kind of thing. Yeah, well, we do the courthouse, we do the card access at the fire department, we we'll do the school cameras in the school, and the ours at the school. So we've done some work for River Bend. So we're around that. Okay. Beyond the two to four week storage, does it automatically delete, erase, and yeah. make new space, or would that be something we have to do? No, nope, you don't have to touch it. Uh, it could just takes take pulls back to the oldest day and starts reporting over it. And there's no way to store some of that older data on the cloud <clears throat> to make new space so that we have records. Uh, so you can, yeah, I mean, you can do cloud storage. It's costly, uh, very costly, uh, because there's the whole transfer thing. Uh, I would say if you're if you're worried that two to four weeks isn't enough, uh, you can just go with a bigger hard drive up front. Just or if, obviously, I mean, if you have an if you have an incident, most cases you know right away. Yeah, right within a day or two. Right. So you can just get you know get whatever footage it is and export it off to a thumb drive or whatever okay. with a PD or whatever. So. I'm, so, I'm curious about what happens. So. So let's say we have cameras up on the on the town com and um, and over the course of two weeks, there are many different sort of not wholesome things taking place. So who then would be responsible for responding to so is that then our Orange County mm -hmm. Sheriff? Is it the state police? Well, is it do we who do we who do we bring that information to and say, you know, this is what we're saying. These are the people that we're seeing on a regular basis on our common using our library. Whoever we hire for coverage in the time frame it's happening, right? I mean, if it's at night, it would be whoever you contract for night. And yeah, I, I think of it as the way I think about it, I'm not saying it's right, is it's just extra eyes. And so if somebody said, hey, we see something bad happening down at the heat field, they're going to call law enforcement. And if we start seeing something with these new eyes, we would call law enforcement and report it kind of in a simpler way. It's, it's, it's how I'm, how, it's either that or Kelly, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was thinking, Kevin, you would be responsible for having yeah, yeah. watching what's happening. The, the, right? no. But that, that's how I was... <laughs> That's how I was thinking about it, Carrie. I'm not sure. And I think, Carrie, you have a good point of like, what exactly are, are they, <laughs> what are we doing with them? What are we doing with them? Because I, most of the time I come across them, it's always trying to retrieve something after the fact and hope that they haven't been recorded over yet. Oh, um, in your in your day job. In my day job. Gotcha. Okay. My SD day job. Yes. Oh, so it would be you. So she knows how to do it. So I was kidding. Um, it, yes, it's. But you bring up a good point of like, you know, because I think of them as a deterrent, and I do think that there's research that shows that they're a deterrent just by having them. 
but then to, you know, are we going to be using them proactively to be like, okay, we think somebody's dealing drugs and start watching it, which actually feels very different to me than what had gone through my mind and what I was thinking of these of protection of our assets. Back in the old days, the CBS, the Chelsea Broadcast Station, you know, your mother knew for anyone that you were smoking a cigarette somewhere. <laughs> But that's, but I think that's a good point because I had not crossed my mind that we would be using them that way. And I think that that is something we would have to address. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Any other thoughts, comments, Keith, anything that, that we, or I didn't say thank you for coming in. Thank you for providing this mm -hmm. the field visit. This is, this is, very good information for us. Um, and, and just, I was just trying to kind of capture this real quick for folks just to give you an, an, an idea. Um, and, and Keith did break this down for building, but just to, just to give kind of a, a, a general idea of, of what the cost would be. Um, and again, these are, I'm, I'm rounding up and making some assumptions, but like at the Old Town Garage, oh, quick question. These are kind of like a 360 degree view camera kind of thing is that so most of what we go to are called multi-sensors cameras so it's basically one wire with a camera that has multiple lenses inside of it okay. so uh the old counter out of it i think we used like a forehead so it's one camera with four lenses so you have four pictures on one camera okay so that's that's kind of the new technology <laughs> well thank you oh, yeah. they're not pan tilt zoom you don't you can't move the cameras Zoom in, they're, they're fixed cameras, but uh, they're just save a lot of labor and money with the cable. Instead of running four wires for four cameras, you run one wire for four cameras, basically. So, motions like most, like iron motion is usually up to 100 feet. Approximately. But in the daytime, it'll be different, it'll be longer. The motion will be longer. No, for for daytime, and, and just to give folks an idea, um, you know, and, and you know, this is in the thirty to thirty-five thousand dollar range. Um, you know what what Keith has quoted. Just and this is really to just get us started in this conversation. Um, is like one one. I, I'll say one camera. You know, with four lenses. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at the old town garage would be six thousand um, dollars. At the transfer station, you know, one camera with I think two lenses would be four thousand um, dollars. One camera, you know, two million. Um, at the uh, at the at our existing town garage, you know, two cameras with each with four lenses would be eight thousand um, dollars. We did ask for the pumps. You know, one of our pump stations would be one camera. Um, with would be three thousand dollars, and then the town hall here would be two cameras with each with four lenses, and that was ten thousand dollars. So just give you a, kind of an order of magnitude. We were looking to, you know, we, we don't know that we would go with all of it or about ten thousand dollars. Yeah. So and again, this is this is just a quote. It's the beginning of the conversation. We were hoping to hear more from Keith, and, and the information he gave us today is super helpful, but. I welcome any feedback from from folks in town here. What what you think about the idea of cameras and and the cost? I hate the idea, but I think it's necessary. I think you guys are on the right track. Being proactive. Okay. Any other thoughts? Any questions for Keith that we have, or anything from the board? If not, I think we'll probably move on from this agenda item. Um, Can I just ask one last question? Has there been any more discussion about turning off the internet when the library is closed or requiring people to get a password and signing up? I don't believe that. I did go to a library meeting and I talked to them. They're a little hesitant to do it, but ultimately they did say that if we felt strongly of turning it off at a certain time, it is possible to do, and they would do that. 
we haven't really discussed it as a board. As a, as a board, we haven't. Yeah. But thank you, Linda. This in the past password piece was that. I don't think they really. We didn't talk about that specifically, but I got the impression that. that they didn't want to do that because they want it to be a public service sort of later into the night for people who need it in case of an emergency and, and stuff like that. So it may be a little, yeah. Right. Yeah. I use it to figure out where my kids are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I use it. I pull it to use it. Yeah. There's a question. Thank you. Was there that family? Yes. I just wanted to ask about the minutes of the last meeting it was something mentioned about a warrant that the sheriff's department charged the town for oh, i i had a question because on our the time sheet it said that they had um gone after an arrest warrant and i was curious if it was if orange county charged every town to serve with arrest warrants or if it was just towns they had but kelly had spoken with lenny and cleared it up he did speak with you. Yeah. Yeah. Asked what it was. Oh, he and I had spoken about it before our meeting. Yeah. 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 We we cleared that up. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> if, if there are no other, I'm sorry. Did you guys hear? Sure. Can you come up where I can hear you? Yeah. yeah. Would you, Would you Would you mind just sorry? can't hear you. Yeah. One of the things you think about is, um, Mr. Fox, like I said, you know that Windsor County is, you know, there are White River people or whatever, however you put it. That's not true. I know a lot of people work for Windsor County, and some of them are from our area. But the thing is, is if we need nighttime and daytime hours, wouldn't it be better to go with one so they can get to know our Chelsea residents? They can get to know how things are sort of right into. That's, that's certainly, we, we've had that discussion. Um, and, and it's something that we as a board, I think, have to have to talk about and make the decision uh, on. And, and, it, and it's a good point. Um, you know, I'll, because I shared it, I think, in our last meeting. I don't think anyone was here. I mean, uh, my own personal opinion is Orange County is our sheriff and they are headquartered here. And they do have some current issues um, in staffing. Um, I guess for me personally, I'm hopefully that they will overcome this and that if we have a one-year contract maybe a year from now it's a whole different situation um and so that's just my personal opinion i don't speak for the board when i say that um and, and i you know I recognize there's issues in all towns there's issues with law enforcement throughout the state um sure but you have a valid point as well so in terms of getting to know our town and our residents so i think you know that the bottom line though is that people want to know that when they make a phone call somebody's going to show up and that it's not going to in my own experience it took two and a half hours to get somebody to come to my house this was this was a, two years back it was ultimately the state police who came and he was annoyed with me because he was going off shift and we have a number of outdoors and I said, well, you can't leave until you've gone through the outbox because I don't want to wake up in the morning and find there was a guy on my porch banging on my door demanding to come in. And, and it was scary. It was 11.30 at night and, uh, and he was vulgar and out of control. And uh, two and a half hours. And I stayed on the phone with the dispatcher, two and a half hours. Yeah, because I was there with one of my daughters, which is the two of us. And I, I just want to know when I make a phone call and say, you know, I'm not feeling safe. This doesn't feel right. There's somebody outside. You know, I've seen people walking around our buildings in the night and I get up and I, you know, I, I don't even call it because I don't see the point. So, you know, I, I just, I just want to know somebody's coming. Thank you. Sir. 
if if there are no other questions uh, thank any, you um you know this this is going to continue um but we do you know i, I think we need to have some more discussion and considerations um both on the law enforcement contract we do have the, the you know the quote from from green mountain security thank you again keith for that um and and we're going to have to make some decision on law enforcement contracts soon um and we're going to be building our budget tonight probably approving it at our next meeting we'd love it if everybody would say this but next the budget piece is going to be exhilarating right Gail? <laughs> <laughs> it's important stuff i wasn't i was not minimizing it but if not we are going to move on to our, our next agenda item so for those thank that are leaving thank you very much thank for, you coming. for coming thanks for coming over man. Thank you very much. Well, we've had to go out. We just we happen to have a contact, so we get. So I uh, Round Hill Security is going to run boxes. Okay. They're at Orleans, and they come down and they monitor and they do a service contract. They maintain it. So if I call them, and something's broken, they come fix it. That, that's good information. Yeah. yeah. We we our, our purchasing policy. Yeah, our purchasing policy. We have to go out to it. Yeah, so I just say to you, I know they're farther out. Yep. They're not a local, but they do a lot in municipalities. And we have a 27 camera system. Oh, really? Yeah. Randolph? Randolph, yeah. There's 27. Round Hill Security. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, actually. Yeah. I'm just going to put it in. Okay. Can I control the screenshot of it? Or you tell them it's certainly, if we get to that point of requesting proposals, we yeah. don't reach out. I just feel like that's the only one we've dealt with, and they've been so far been great, and they have a large system, and recommend buying the larger um, hard drives awesome. to start off with, because we can go back for two months. But the motion, some of the motion ones, and Randolph's been near town, so there's a lot more motion, but do you like well, yes, 16 gig? While we're on this, just who, who monitors at Randolph? So we have a there. There's a feed that comes right into the 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 fire department, not the fire department, the police department, and then you, it's all in the cloud, so you could go back. So someone reported, I saw something here. We can go back and look at cameras, and we had the huge felon vandalism for like three weeks that went through there. I finally caught them on cameras and was able. They looked right at the cameras. They tried to spray paint it because they're dumb. <laughs> so. But like the town manager, and then there's like an app on your phone, so you could log. You guys could log in. You could give that to other agencies to do so. Plus, then you could download it onto a thumb drive, burn it to a disk, or you can share that clip to somebody. Like you right. could send it to like the state police and say, "Hey, here you go. Here's the clip from that time." Right. They can do what they want with it. You said it automatically downloads and goes to the cloud. It, there is a hard drive, so we have a 16 gig hard drive for each server so there's one at the pd for ours there's one at the town hall for theirs there's one at the rec building for theirs each one has a wi-fi connection in their own server but then they're all connected through the internet to the app you go and i can look you can look at all of them wherever you want and then find your times download specific like you want 102 p.m to like 152 p.m you can download that specific time for those sounds thank you thank you Appreciate so my <laughs> <laughs> I bet he'll turn up. I'm sure I'll find <laughs> I just like a quick question for you. I was just going to add that healthcare is set. There is the point of discussion. Well, the, the only discussion on the healthcare building, um, or the healthcare building, the health center building, was just that we've been made aware that there, the board wasn't considering what to do with the old health center building. But that's clear. And just something I saw that at the meeting, Senator. Yeah. We we don't know. We we, um, we have no information. Yeah, That's why we put it on our agenda. Um, because one of the things that we had heard was they might be interested in offering the building to the town. So that that was the whole conversation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So Gail. Um, do we want? Do we want to? What's up, you guys? But do we want to just ask Rick if there's yeah. nothing? Okay. Do you mind if we just do that real quick? Yeah. Rick's just got that one. Is that okay with you? Sure. Hey, Rick. We're, 
we, we only had one thing for you, which was Scandon Road, and you may want to stay for the town highway portion of the budget, but we wanted to give you the chance if you didn't to talk to us about what we don't have the budget. What they want to know about it. I believe several meetings ago we said to you, should, oh, yeah. should we upgrade it? Should we keep it a class three road? Should we make it a class four road? Should we make it a trail? Should we discontinue it? We were looking to you for recommendation. Well, I think we should downgrade to a class four, but I think we I need to look back at minutes to see because I remember Charlie coming in and talking about it when he bought the property. Huh? Nothing happened though. Nothing did? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think it should be downgraded to class four. Make it a class four road. Because right now it's in class four condition without doing any class three. Right, yeah. but we wouldn't have to do anything to it right now. Well, we went up the other day and cleaned up all the trees, everything up there, so we can get up there. And so the reason this is we're talking about this is I believe there was a letter that came in from the agency of transportation regarding how we were classifying that road um and so i think the board has to look into whatever process that is i don't know if there's actually a process karen i, I don't think it's like, right there it's in your packet read <laughs> what'd you say read <laughs> oh, come on karen I can't um, it all. <laughs> um Oh, it is. It's right here. I'm sorry. Thank you. I put, I just got the package when I got here. So, um, this is the. Sorry, there's several pages. To you guys. Um, so what this says is feedback that I believe that uh, Casey had gotten. The process is very similar for discontinuance or reclassification to a class four road or legal trail. What differs is that with the discontinuance, the ownership of the right of way would revert to the adjacent landowners, while the reclassification to a class four legal trail, the town keeps ownership of the right of way. Um, the, the person from AOT's mapping section says, imagine since this is essentially a driveway, the town will probably want to discontinue and get the right of way. Yep. Anyway, that's a speculatory. Um, so here's the process. Provide public notice 30 days of site visit and public hearing. Provide directed notice to adjacent landowners of site visit and public hearing. Provide notice to planning commission of site visit and public hearing. If it is if discontinuation, we need to notify parks and forest parks and recreation. Hold site visit and public hearing 30 days after notices. Select board must vote for action at public hearings slash select board meeting and then provide VTrans with documentation of notices, site visits, and minutes from select board meeting, public hearing, and sketch map and mileage of discontinuance. So the, the process is if we decide to take this from a class three road to anything else, class four road, trail, or discontinuance, there's a process which will be public notice. And so I guess tonight we could make a motion if we wanted to, to and work with Casey to begin that process of notification. Rick, your recommendation is to downgrade it to a class four. Thoughts, comments from the board? And if not, is there a motion? I agree with Rick. I move to move forward with the process for downgrading Scannon Road to a class four which includes posting a public notice. You look like you want to say something. Is there a second? Oh. Second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm under discussion. I'll say, Kelly, you keep looking at me, and I'm like, give me a second. <laughs> um, a second. So there's a motion and a second by Lena. Um, any discussion? It looked like you wanted to say she, she did. Thank you. So I'm thank like, you. looking like, are you? I'm thinking. Is there a comment? <laughs> yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So we will work with Casey to begin the class four uh, process. And obviously, like, you'll need to be part of that, any say visit, that kind of stuff, which 
I, I, I believe those are the uh, those meetings are warned meetings where the board goes as a whole and does the tour with the adjacent property owner. So we gather the information and then come back. We would come back here, we'd meet on site and then come back here and, and do one of the things we should talk about um, in terms of timing of that process. It's just making sure that with winter, you you could plow the road today if you needed to. It's the end of it. I'm just thinking if it's 30 days from now, we got for some magical reason we have three feet of snow. Just making sure that we could all get up there. Okay. Anything else, Rick, for us tonight? Any updates? We're on our third month season already. Stockpiled. <laughs> You've already started using the garbage pile down here. Did some on Saturday morning, but traffic Saturday just killed it. So, well, thank you again. Yeah, thank you for all your long hours because I know I drove up the road and it was bad and the next morning when I left it was beautiful compared to what it was. <laughs> I don't know. Better. In comparison it was yeah. Yeah. I could get my car down it, which before I could not. Problem is starting, you know, when it's still soft. Like I went up the hook road first. You don't have much time to see the trees and stuff. Well, so, I, uh, I don't know what exactly your route was that night, but I think probably, pro probably you were, uh, probably you were, where our house was was towards the end of your route. And I can tell that it froze up pretty good. <laughs> I left the front row to last because that was yeah was, was the wettest. Yeah, so, yeah it freezes fast. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rick. Yeah. If nothing else for Rick. We got to jump into the budget because poor Gail's been at work since this morning and she wants to get this. Do you have anything for us? Maybe we could go to the highway. The highway. Yeah, you want to do the highway part? <laughs> um. All right, Gail, how do you want to do this? Well, um, I mean, I can go through it quickly. Like, for the start with the state aid, you got two extra uh, installments, which are deducted from this, this year's installments. That would make us like a development to the federal law. What I suggest we do is not, you know, I'm going to see if the account, I think we can just. Put it in as an extra surplus so that we'll have the full amount that we normally get every year. Because right now, we have got the two installments of the state aid in 23. So we're not going to, you know, we're not going to consider that in the 23 budget. It's going to, we're going to see the to the 24. So that will bring the tax rate down a little. It's a lot higher, and you know, it's probably still to make a change. But um, that's one thing we can do. So, so Gail, to help, help me out on that is under the revenue side of the town highways. Yeah, these. Sorry, hold on. There you go. Oh, and so what you're putting in there for proposed is eighty-five thousand. Yeah. Although they gave us one of two thousand twenty-four payments, but yeah. we just. If we can, we just roll it over as surplus. Yeah. Okay. Rick, do you want us to move that so you can see that? No. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying um, to catch up with it. <laughs> no, same. Um, and FEMA, uh, I don't know if we put anything in for us. You getting anything for them or not? I mean, we should get something, I would think, next year, but I don't know what number would be good. Right. Yeah, I don't know how we go about <coughs> figuring out figuring that out. Well, so I mean, would it be what we have in so far minus the twelve percent that would be ours, and that would be our our hope? <laughs> I mean, well, we most, got more to do, so it's right. That's what we 
Oh yeah. But but that uh, would at least come in on the income side. I mean, right. we we I gotta believe in two thousand twenty four we'll be reimbursed for, uh, for the contract for what we did yes. last year anyway, yep. and probably if it gets done early enough, we would get it this year for this year. But but if we could, um, you know, just put our match in there, I think that might be good. So we have that money. Yeah. Right. Or we just take it out of the ARPA money. So. So if we're going to use the ARPA money, how do we go about doing that? Do we have to have a meeting and discuss it with the town and have the town decide if? We, or, we, we already had a previous meeting said we were going to vote yeah. to use the ARPA money as general fund monies. Like with, with the understanding that we would come back when it was reimbursed. Right, right, right. right I, did, so. I was talking about our match portion coming out of it. Um, like, so our 12% coming out of that money that we didn't intend to oh, reimburse. I think I think we have the ability to to budget it however we need to budget and I think there's some point in time we do have to come back and have an overall that, yeah. ARPA discussion but we we did as a board say yes. that we were going to right. use it as general fund with the understanding that right. once the dust all settles we will have some form of ARPA money left that we will have a community discussion on that is my recollection but this is on the revenue side. So this is the FEMA reimbursement. Yeah. And so I would assume that whatever dollars that Casey has put in for, and, and maybe just, I don't know what the numbers are, but let's say we've done, I don't know, $50,000 worth of contract work. I gotta believe that 2024 will be reimbursed 87 and a half percent of that. And that's what I would, whatever that number is, <clears throat> I'd recommend we put that in as budgeted for revenue. Yeah, that was my opinion. Now, the, the only question with that is if we budget for revenue, it reduces the amount that we're going to raise by taxes, but we do need to, we do need to have a mouth in there for the new contracts. Right. Well, but we also need to, if we use our ARPA money yeah. to pay for that, it, it wouldn't offset next year's taxes. It would actually need to go into mm -hmm. the, the, the ARPA fund to replenish it. Yeah, so we have to put it. So we probably shouldn't budget any revenue here, right? Uh, I don't know. Um, let me check with Chad, see what his recommendation on that is. Okay. Send the budget. Okay. I'll be interested to see <clears throat> what he says. Yeah. All right. Cut it to your point. Yeah. So you sign. Yep. All right. Well, I mean, the rest of the revenue is just what we normally do. Right. So that should be fine. Um, can we talk? Can we talk through these are our last meeting, correct? Yeah. I think okay. So. okay. Okay. So then the highway salaries, I get at the three percent. You and I. I updated all like uh, 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 the only thing is the Beamer's retirement. It includes Paul's salary, just because I I don't know if I should break it down into an estimate of what Rick and uh, John would get out of the hundred fifty nine thousand. So lower that a little. I guess, I guess I could figure out all the hours are pretty steady, 30 hours a week. So that's so that's for the viewers retirement piece? Yeah, that's like that's for the whole amount. So I didn't think of that. I guess I could think in how would I figure Rick's and Paul, I mean Rick's and John's, but Paul's is pretty steady, so I probably could just figure as would be tough then. Just assume a, no, a set number of hours? Yeah. All right. I'll, do it that way to fix that. So that'll be a little lower. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, and put in the security system. So did that last week. Um, which, which, where was I, Gail? Sorry. I just. Security, we put the 8,300. Okay. Yeah, so we did agree that we were going to budget. Yeah. For this, for the security cameras down there. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> 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 
So, so Gail is. Oh yeah, we're under technology. But do I see? No, no. So, so the spreadsheet you have is not the hard copy that Gail gave us. This is, this is the drive. Oh. It was supposed to be. Is it different than this? The, the numbers are different than what's on the hard copy. All right, maybe it's you. I opened this one. Yeah, it should be. This one is awesome from today. Yeah, I'm not a list. You could go in to see. I guess just this one. We're like, I have to hand it back to you, Bill. No, that because this one doesn't have all the arrows in that section. Oh, you know why? <laughs> because um, they're in budget. There. I had this one open. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's under, yeah, it's all under there. I didn't have time to update that one. So, yeah, it should all be in there. Okay. That's why. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. Got it. I, I was feeling your panic for a minute. I, <laughs> And everything else looks fine. So we have we have a line for security and we have a line for garage technology. Oh, do we do we mm. double? Yeah. Yeah. Take out the security. Yeah, we can oh. remove the security line. Well, or, or you can or leave it separate. It's let's fine. leave it separate. Leave, yes, I, I like it. Okay. We had it separate and then we decided to add it to technical. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Numbers total stay the same. Yeah. Well, no, it'll go down because oh, yeah. we're taking an extra eight. Hours. Hey, we just saved eight grand. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Are you making notes on yours or should I have yeah. it down here? I mean, you can make it there too, and I'll just stop. Okay. And I'll save it back to the drive. Okay. So we've gone through these. And then they put a very pair of small nuts. that already. I guess we did do it. We were just, we Rick did. wasn't here because he was working. Oh, yeah. yeah, Rick, and certainly if you see anything. Bacon, looking at the trucks, I was talking to uh, Dan from uh, Clark's or Allegiance. They, they got a truck built out back out on that is going to be built in May this year. So if we wanted to trade that 2015, we could we could get one. But can we get the specs on it. it? Well, yeah, he's supposed to be sending all that. Yeah, I think. I just thought I'd bring it up. Well, so why don't we put that? Put it on the next, the next agenda. agenda. Yeah, like by then, hopefully, we can have this the specs on it and then see if it's that might be a really good option. In that plan, that plan. you got to you got to send me that no. plan. I got I don't have it. I, you, I thought you said you had a phone. Yeah. You've been busy, so, so I don't think so, we really. Want so can you guys get that to me before the next meeting? Please? I'll have to. I'll. Can you find it, Rick? I have a copy of it, but I can't seem to put take my, a picture of it. <laughs> Text it to me now. Or put it on your desk and let me know, and I'll stop and take a picture and text it to him. But I looked and I couldn't find the copy that I have of it. They say how much? The truck. Yeah. Um, no. I think it's around. We have about a little over 200000 in the high equipment. I'll we'll still <laughs> put it 50000 this year. So. Maybe about 70000 yeah, 70. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have a concept. How much do you truck cost? About two eighty. Well, our trade is probably fifty, sixty. The stars might align in our favor. Anything else on this piece? No. Nope. We'll scroll down past town equipment. Go. Highway maintenance. <laughs> Anything here? 
I mean, the gravel one scares me, but. I know, I was like, should we revise that? Do we think we're still in the right ballpark for that? Well, Mother Nature's going to send you, right? Oh, we got it. What do we got? <laughs> that we just signed off on in there that we have just put out. Yeah. And what we put up, we've already used half of. <laughs> well, do you think we need to adjust that after this last mud season? I don't know. Oh. This is, is there I don't know how many more months. Well, well, yeah. Well, I mean, but I mean, the other the other side of that is saving on sand. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, that is true. <laughs> the glass house. Well, the, sand, <laughs> the sand's cheaper, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we run out of gravel, right? We got a lot of sand. Oh, that would be awesome, buddy. I'm going to spread that. It was on the Bob and Shaw. It was. It was. Yep. So are we good with town highway maintenance? That's obviously a big portion of the budget, but we, we talked it through. Rick, are you good with that? Uh, next is construction <laughs> projects, was, which isn't a lot except for we put in the budget 75,000 towards match for FEMA repairs if we get to that point of doing some of the permanent work. Are we still good at that? Well, it's not going to be enough anyways, but right, you're talking two million dollars worth of so, so you did, yeah, yeah, you weren't at our meeting, I don't think, were you? No. So what we I forget the the funny math that I did, but let's say it's two million dollars. Two million dollars would be two hundred fifty thousand dollars total. But for this coming year, we're not going to spend all that. We're just not going to get to a place of replacing box culverts and pedestrian bridges and permits, old fences. So some of it. So what we said was some of it would be this year, and then the next year will be even more. Like that. And what are your thoughts on that, Rick? I mean, you can do everything. Right. So are we still good with leaving construction projects where it is? If, if so, run out. What's that? Do what you can until you run out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. Yeah, I think that, that's a. Good place to start, I guess. I don't. But they're freaking culverts. You never switched that over to the FEMA. I did some of it, but I think it was all them thirty-inch ones were FEMA. Yeah. Wonder. That's last year's budget. Where it says thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Most of I that was those thirty-inch culverts for the FEMA projects. Yeah, it was twenty-four thousand. Yeah. I'll look at that. Maybe I just it didn't transfer over when I updated it. But I did. You asked me about it. Yeah, I moved it. I moved it into FEMA. So maybe it, when I updated this, I have to transfer everything. So I'm maybe I didn't transfer. Are we down to debt and capital and capital funding? So we've got equipment payments. We uh. We, we had said, I believe, at our last meeting, this one, I don't remember as much, but we ended up our equipment fund to $100,000 from $70,000, just knowing that, that we talked about at our last meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just knowing. That we have a lot of equipment that needs to be replaced. And then kept the resurfacing fund and the highway matching fund. We The highway matching fund, we increased. Do you have a question mark on that, Gail? Um, yeah. I guess I'm, maybe I need to remember if we had that or not. That we did, and the reason we did that was to match the grant, the town highway grant for the junior okay. oh. That's why we increased that. 
It used to be. Wasn't it 25 before? I think it was originally. Yeah, it should be 25 somewhere anyway, shouldn't there? Yeah. I don't think we ever used it, the 25. I'm sorry, Rick, I didn't follow. I think there's a 25,000 matching fund from before. Yeah, there's, there's, there's should there's be in the, somewhere. There, there's a balance in there. Yeah, yeah. there could be a balance. Yeah, there, is, there is a balance yeah. for the matching fund. I have to move some of that over. over. The side lock. Yep. Are we good with debt and capital funding? So that leaves us. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Our total budget is eight hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. Yeah. Last year, our budget was seven hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. Um, that's about an eighty-one thousand dollar difference. But seventy-five thousand dollars of that is in assuming seventy-five thousand dollars for match fee or the match fee yeah. projects. So not notwithstanding that, we're within five or six thousand dollars of last year's budget, which is actually surprising. Who is that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think we better I think it. that total still has the eight thousand duplicated for the CJ. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Oh. yeah, sorry. So eight fifty five, one seventy. Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Is this all completely filled in? <clears throat> that's on the revenue side, right? Well, yeah. So we're we're okay on that way stuff down below. So I don't know. Um, we normally do motions to approve. I we we still have stuff that Bill was yeah, supposed to say. Yeah, I still have a couple things on the transfer. Right, yeah. but this is just the highlight for it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I would just think we just approve the whole budget. Okay. Yeah. Which which we would, as Gail and I talked today, we'll probably do yeah. in our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we're good, generally speaking, with the highway budget that we just went through. Rick, any concerns that you have? Everything's fine. Okay, and we will put a town truck on our next agenda. Yes. When you get back, can you let me know so that I can try to look at it ahead of time? You will, if, if you would, send it out to all of us. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be helpful that we all get a chance to. So we could compare. Oh, you already have freight liners, so we should be good. And you guys, can you guys will get me that so that hopefully I can punch that into a spreadsheet. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. I, I think that those conversations have to go together, at least in my mind. Yeah, life. yeah, no, I think they should. I just can't find the copy of it. That I, have. Got, I don't have a copy. All you guys got to get me is whatever you got handwritten down. And we'll put it in so we can like, well, like, kind of like we did for the fire station for fire trucks and stuff. Just kind of play it out. Yep. Can we move on? You guys have fun. Have a good night. Great, great, great. 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 You can stay. Yeah. Uh, it right. it's, it's, cold. Cold. It's, empty. it's not snowing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. All right, Gail. <laughs> Um, I guess we can jump to town hall because everything else is, I mean, updated the salaries and that. Pretty oh, where are we going to, sorry, Gail? Uh, can we just start at town hall because that's where we have some stuff we have to do. Now. Uh, five. Four and five. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know that the when there's a problem. 
So I haven't connected with him fully, and I will have to try again. We've been playing phone tag, and then with the holiday, I just okay. 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 And see, same with pellets. I think the question that we had here was whether or not that increase was because we had to get them removed and replaced from. Right. right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my question for him is like what the projected yearly maintenance is and how many pellets, and how many pellets we okay. estimate we need a year. So for costs, I just I can't believe we have been connected. No transfer station. You were able to get a hold of that guy. I did. Oh, good. Uh, so I primarily about servicing those compactors, and he recommended uh, two to three thousand to come down and service both of those and go through them. And, and we think that's something we definitely should do this next year. He certainly recommended that we should do it. Because yeah, because in the past, it hasn't we let been, it go. Yeah. It cost us a lot of money. And it hasn't been done for a couple of years, I don't think. Yeah. Well, well, we well, last year, so. He says two to three, then I think we have to do three to cover. Yeah. Now, is that going under maintenance or? Probably I would think, yeah, I would think. All right. What about repairs of equipment? Or is that the bundled in? I don't know if we can just get rid of that and put that all into maintenance. Or? Yeah, I would think so. The other maintenance question we had was the toilets, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, so I contacted. Few different places. I didn't get a hold of Hardigan, and they said that they can do something with that. They're supposed to get in touch with me as far as a price to do for the compost. To <laughs> okay. Yeah. The only person I forgot to get a hold of was Chris about signing in the oil tank building. So we should. So all of these, we should just be putting, at this point, should we just assume some numbers yeah. and, and build to confirm them? Because we, we just have to have a budget. And yeah, that's something. What we need to, what Gail, Gail needs to do is have yeah. numbers in all of these such that she can kind of go through it, and summarize right. it for our next meeting. So so the, the, the maintenance is $3,000 for the compactors, but part of that fine metal is also the composting toilet. And I just, I mean, should we just assume something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can. I'm hoping that they're, she was supposed to call me back this afternoon. Right. So well, we could, we could assume something for tonight, though, because we're going to approve yeah. a budget in the next meeting. At least we we put a flag in it, and then we, we can adjust it at the last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, why don't we? Put in like six thousand that would cover maybe the toilet and the building thing. Yeah, let's let's do that for now. I'll. I mean, if you get something before you know the end of next week, I'm hoping to have this all. Yeah. Thanks for fixing that, Jesse. <laughs> What was that one, the FEMA? We weren't sure why we were so far over. Oh, why we were at 9,000 versus 7,200, the budget? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, I mean, FEMA dumpster was like 2,000 something on it, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave that at 7,200. We could keep it 7,200. Okay. <clears throat> um, we had talked about looking into change contract. Yeah, if I'm still like contacted and sell it again. I think because of the holidays, it sounded like there was some jamming up there. Um, 
However, I was thinking, um, you know, Myers' price has gone up. Did we, did we account for any of that? And they went up. To, I think they went up twenty five dollars a ton. Just, just on. Yeah, just the tonnage, and then that hundred dollar extra fee on every right. thing they pick up. That's like a sweep. I mean, I think at this point, if we budget for Myers and we can get a better deal for Castell, it will still be coming. Yeah, no, I think I think that's fine. I'm just we should yeah, adjust we the budget a little bit yeah, because of the increases that Myers has put on. Okay. Yeah, make sure we've covered those. So that so we budgeted thirty three thousand. It's cost us forty three thousand dollars. Yeah. The price went up and then the fee, the extra fee. And mm -hmm. then there was a few things there. One of the they charge us extra. We have to take some of it off. Yeah. <laughs> they adjusted for some of it. But... So, should we go with 43 or budget over that? I think we have to try to budget close to what we paid this year. I mean, we took out the FEMA dumpsters, that's not... Well, the FEMA dumpsters are up here. The right. municipal solid waste doesn't even right. cover those. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we need to... I don't know if we need to budget exactly for 43000 because during the flood, they were... They were heavy. They were, yes, they were charging us 20. So, I mean... Sometimes we did like 38. That, yeah, that seems, yeah, that seems reasonable. We don't, remind me, we don't actually have contracts? No. So we'll, we'll, budget, we'll budget that with the understanding that we'll get, we'll get prices to see if we need to. Yes. Yeah. Um, should we make estimates for these then too? The pellets and the good, good boiler. Wait, just so you probably. Yeah, I have no idea what our usage is or what they are charging a ton. I think we'd have. What what did they charge last year? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I don't know the prices on that without I we'd have to look at an old bill. Uh, I mean yes. for purposes of tonight, do we just put the numbers in that we had for the budget before sure. and, and and next week mm -hmm. we can just update them? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then the last blank we have is uh, <laughs> So, so Gail, this is that's one that's definitely tough, um, and, I, and I hate to get. I guess it's under budget, so we can talk about it. But we didn't talk about it under the one point P, but we we do have to. Do you have any pizza in there? No, uh, no, it's not hard right. to select board has snacks at their meetings. I think we're missing out. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that I heard it's a highway liaison that brings it. Okay, hey, next time. Do we have any requests? Cheese and crackers. Uh, you know, for the sake of the budget, we probably should put a number in and then decide on the next meeting. It could be on something to move forward on. You could do the middle of the road thing, they suggested. Yeah, I think that's 
4B option sounds like. So which one? 4B, 3B, or 4B. Yeah, well, why don't we give Bill just a second just to make sure yeah. that he can. <laughs> For the, he doesn't go waste. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's such a tough one. It's not easy. But we should at least pick. We should at least pick something to tighten budgets for Gail's government. Yeah. Would be my suggestion. I think the good thing is, I mean, if we go with the middle, it's like she's never said, you know. We see a difference. Then next year, we know that maybe you know, you ought to do a little more. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so a lot more than what we were getting. Mm -hmm. um, this is. I also think it has yeah. brought up the thing that we should look into the signs that Stratford have because I do think that sign they had down there made a difference in first meeting. Which oh, the radar speed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Stratford yeah. has ones that are like. Yeah. yeah, so I think there's, there's a bunch of variations of them. Yeah. yeah, but in terms of the, yeah, the, the policing, and, and maybe we can change. Yeah, you know, do you have any issues if we change that by our description to the law enforcement contract? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's is that okay with you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what what if Bill was talking. You know, what do, we should put some number in here. Yeah, I think maybe I think we should put uh, I think we should put the amount from the feedback that we've had tonight. That's about the only thing we really have to go off from. Yeah. I think option four B is what we should put in for now. Similar to feedback that I've had outside of the meeting. It is. It's kind of that middle of the road. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get to you guys <laughs> yesterday, okay, but thank you for playing it. Yeah. So yeah, this is actually yeah, it's really helpful. Spent most of my time figuring out how you how you put it on one sheet to make it actually seem sensible. <laughs> no, not formatting. I'm saying just but like which columns would make it seem sensible of like. The options of options of options. Um, no, the formatting I get down, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, the. I think that's a fair. <clears throat> sixty thousand. Yeah, do we want to plug sixty thousand in for tonight and yeah, and at our next meeting? Yeah, we'll just see what the bottom line is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whether or not you know, at our next meeting. Whether or not we get a proposal from Orange County or not, I don't know. Okay. What, what else, Gail? Um, maybe I'll get it in live. Oh, Jessica, so I have an election. No, she did. No, okay. Under elections, but for six six seven, four thousand six hundred sixty. She added it up, so I'm just giving <laughs> where. Um, go down under general expenses. Yep, four six six zero. Yeah, oh, and then yeah. Well, next year is an election year, isn't it? <coughs> Plus tablets. And um, the website, you have to figure out if that's kind of possible. Awesome. Yeah, I would stick with. Oh. Uh, I'm not reading the website, so I think we're stuck with Thor. Oh. Um, I would say probably like. 700 then because i think that's our contract with them right now right <clears throat> all right our website works it does i mean we should pause i should at this time 
we didn't know it, but we didn't have a functioning planning commission. We didn't have a website developer. We didn't have a town administrator. We didn't have a road crew. We didn't have anybody really operating the sewer. Website. It just got too costly. Well, whatever. But I just, that just gave me pause to be like, oh, if you think about the things that we didn't have. Beer, we don't have. We get a work on the beer. That's our best story. Yeah. <laughs> and all the roads, and like. yeah. there's still plenty to do, but I'm just yeah. trying to put yeah. it. In we did. We have accomplished a lot, but yeah, seems like the list. Is we haven't even thrown anything at each other at any of these meetings yet either. So <laughs> we're doing all right. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I we gotta check with. I should have checked with Linda. We gotta check on that. First branch. Nobody got any figures on that, did they? What their budget is? No. I just threw that number in there. I didn't know what. Where is that one? I'm missing it. Under appropriations. Oh. Is it Linda who does the? It would be Chase. Chase. Well, I had reached out to Chase and asked for the write-up, and he sent said he already sent it to you. So I guess I assumed he had talked to you about budget, but. Do you want me to reach out to him? I mean, I could look at probably went to Casey. He's, he was watching earlier. Is he still watching? <laughs> no, I think everyone logged out. But. Yeah, you notice. We're <laughs> going to start guys. putting the exciting stuff at the end of the end agenda. Of the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I, I could check with him. And I'll look at whatever he sent to Casey. Yeah, your own end. Um, and then the only thing is, I reached out to Dave Bradshaw for the West Coast Cemetery, so hopefully I'll get back to me on how much I just put seventeen hundred in there because I thought I might want to go up. And that's just the mowing, right? Yeah. And then of course it's just your request so on. I'm still waiting on. <laughs> Those were due today. No, they're actually due for seven days before, so they're actually due. Probably two days after Casey said she wanted her final reports. But it's like, no, you can't really just say you can't turn your petition in because they have till 47 days prior to tell right. them you to turn that petition well, right. in. Right. But that's, yeah, I mean, that's Casey said that to give some, <laughs> to give us permission to, yeah. Um, and I think there are some out there. Oh, yeah. there is. Yeah, I signed one today. Yeah. Send several. <laughs> okay. So we'll just assume that for now, Gail, that yeah. number. And um, we'll see if I can get that number. And once I get the number in, once I get all the numbers in, I can see what the bottom line is and I get the ceiling. You're going to have to, you know. Get for taxes. Well, so I mean, if we look at our budget last year for total general government was seven hundred thirteen thousand, and our budget is eight hundred thousand now, roughly. So that's eighty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So if you take I'm just going off the sheriff's thing, which was twelve and a half thousand dollars. It's twenty-four dollars on the tax rate. This is five times that. So we'd be just that increases taxes about one hundred twenty-five dollars. If I just did my math, but it's actually seven, mind you. So it's more like one hundred seventy-five dollars. A lot. The petition. So no, total. just total. total. I'm looking at the total. So, so if you take the okay. total for our general government, Kelly, the seven hundred thirteen thousand, okay, um, was last year's budget. This year's budget is I just used a round number eight hundred thousand seven hundred ninety six thousand. If I'm doing my math right, that's eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars. And so that's seven times the amount of twelve thousand five hundred, which is roughly one hundred seventy five. Like if that budget. And, and the revenue can, the revenue is part of the equation as well, but just yeah. assuming the revenue stays the same, just general government, that's $175 increase in taxes. To which 90 of that is law enforcement. 90, 
of the hundred seventy five dollars is law enforcement. I just, I'm not saying these numbers are all right. That's how my brain works to put it in perspective. Just it's definitely helpful. And, and you know, and then down to the town and down to the highway budget. It's it's similar. So what we're what we're talking about, generally speaking, is a three hundred and fifty dollar increase in taxes. Now, that that said, oh, how much it was? Ninety of that is ninety of that is law enforcement, and seventy five of that is the FEMA reimbursement for the projects we need to do. So one hundred and sixty five of three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm just going around. I'm going to spend some time with the spreadsheet after we're done this, just to kind of summarize it. Yeah, because it'll be safe. do, yeah. Spreadsheet with a smile on my face like that. Never. Sorry. And I never will. I'm glad you enjoy it so much. Some people call them engineers. Engineers. Yay. Gail, do you feel like you've got enough to? Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm going to send it to the account and see what people get into. Jesse, will you email that to us? Because mm -hmm. if not, I'll email Gail and email that to us. It, so, with the finishing of the budget, we're going to have the numbers for your town report. I mean, your town warning for non taxable and taxable, which I think, unless you want another special meeting somewhere, if you can have the warning up to date by then, then I'm only waiting for one. So you're going to help us do that. Casey I sent an I email that said, Who's doing it? And I was like, Why? Well, no, I it. sent it to you. I sent it to all of you with. Sorry. Together last year, and I said I'm still waiting here for trustees for library. Okay. Sorry. Still out. That was communication on my yeah, part. I know. But I, I, my I, update, I updated it with the one petition that came in today. Still waiting on one. So we'll <clears throat> probably have that on the agenda next week as well as the budget. You can get your warning set. The one I signed today was Claire Mark. Did that come in to you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. $2,040. Yep. So I'm just waiting on one. Okay. That usually gets us there. Okay. But I, I will just forward you the whole Thank you. warning that. And then you guys can look at it and see is there anything else you need to put on this warning? So we can approve the budget and the warning at our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. It would be good if we did. We're We're not have to schedule a special meeting. But that's the tricky part. So if, you, if you do that warning, if somebody comes up with a petition, 47 days. Then, then, then we'd have to have, have a special meeting. Special meeting and a new board. Yep. We were meeting twice a week last year at this time. So. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, not that I want more meetings, but. You know, thoughts on the budget? Concerns? Worries? Um, no, I guess we're all right. Yeah. Are there no. things? Are there things that you that we should be thinking about differently? Do you think? <laughs> do you have suggestions for us? No, I mean, just next year maybe we could be a little bit more prepared earlier with some of the things. You know, like if we want to think about a different company, yeah, transfer station, right. or maybe start that started earlier. July. We find that people yeah. don't get back to. Me. I mean, I sent a message emails that guy two weeks ago. <laughs> I think we're a tiny year around the holidays of as well. So yeah. yeah, I mean that's like the line credit bank didn't have enough staff to get it done for this week. So it'll be next week. Next week. So the line so line of credit we're we're holding up. So budget we're good. Yeah. Line of credit. Casey put on her gravel at Ice Street. Yeah, there's going to be a contract in there. I don't think she gave it back to me. Well, it's in there. Okay. I put a sign here. <clears throat> what you should do is a motion that backdates it to the date of the contract and the amount of your motion. Okay. 
There's a lot of stuff in here. I think it's that one. Okay. But I need to look on the last page. Where is it? I'm sorry, what, what is this for? That was for the ice rink at the, for the recreation. But as things go, contracts usually come in after work is done. So. Okay, so this is something basically that the rec. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a high dollar thing, and for that amount of paperwork, you have to have it. So. Okay, so this is the rec committee. <laughs> This is a contract to haul 42 yards of one inch plant mix to the rec field where John's trucking out of Berkshire, Vermont, John Beebe. We want to backdate it. What was the date? Well, we just date it. We, I don't think we can backdate it and just say. Aaron, I'm just saying. You can just approve the contract that was dated November 20th. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, got it. Thank and you. then I'm out. Oh, sorry. I was I didn't hear what she said. Um, this is. Um, compensation for the road services will be $884.58. Sorry. 58 cents. So is there a motion on the contract for? I move to approve the contract for John's trucking of hauling 42 yards of plant mix for the rec department on November 22nd for $884.58. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And I think we all signed the contract, so there's that. Oh, <clears throat> I did have one thing I having to run into a uh, boardman, and he said that he would be looking at seven to eight hundred for that building over there. I'm sorry, you ran into it. Dennis Boardman, Dennis? Yeah, I think so. Um, Dennis Boardman, and he said that the rent for that uh, barbershop. Uh, area oh, oh, oh. that um that would be set between seven and eight hundred what are we thinking now <clears throat> seven twenty five but the other thing is that we need to ask him about that ram ram yes. just something um Maybe that's a future agenda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. Of this. Well, yeah. I just we're going to talk about the health center building too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So future would be admin offices, and, and, and is it just can we say we'll do that after town meeting? Oh yeah, I mean there's no hurry. No, yeah. No, it's it's good. I, I just I, I don't want to lose track of it, but right. we just got so many things. So yeah, you know, anything else? No. Nope. So I think we'll leave this with you'll update the budget, send it back out to us if there's anything you know, yeah. let us know if we need to come prepared to look at it, make sure we're all in a good place to be able to approve it at our next meeting. Uh, try and get it out early enough and you feel like checks for typos and stuff like that too. Yep. Do we need to send the back side of this? What's that? Do you send the back side? Oh, the yeah. box? I don't know why they have so much stuff. I'm catch just pass it back. Well, sign again. So if we're good, then we'll move on on our agenda. Is there anything else, Gail? Okay. I think though, if you've had enough of us, we've had, we've had enough of today too, probably. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Gail. As always, Gail, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I know I have an easy time, but I didn't have time to go home. <clears throat> Health Center building. Can we put that on the agenda. Uh, so, I guess knowing that maybe we're renting out the space in the Treasurer's office. 
um, I have spoken with a couple members of the, of the health center board and they're interested in having a meeting slash conversation with us uh, about what they might consider to do with the building for the town. So is the health center closing? No. The old the old, the old, the old Oh, the one like in front of yeah. the yeah. current. Gotcha. So um, I guess I would recommend our next step being setting up uh, a time to meet with the health center board and discuss options. I guess we just need to possibly decide a day or a, or a meeting that we would like them to come to. So, I actually just last night had a conversation because my mother was on the board. Apparently, they've got a meeting coming up to decide whether or not they're actually interested, really interested in getting rid of it or not. Okay. I guess that's a new development. They got a meeting coming. So, thanks again, Gil. Thanks. And so, maybe we put this on like maybe like the January 30th. We get three meetings this month. Or the first meeting in February. We had two weeks in a row, the last one in January and the first one in February. So maybe we just put it on our first meeting in February. Is that sure. Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. Sunday. Yep. See, who's going to be, be paying that to it? Fourth, uh, sixth, sixth, sixth. <laughs> oh, exactly. oh, yeah, sure. You're just throwing numbers out. Then you can't be wrong. I just wrote the numbers so I could win. It's the sixth. So we'll invite them, members of the health center board, uh, regarding that old health center. February we sixth. Yep. Well, the state of Vermont semi quincentennial. How did, we, did I do that right? Mm -hmm. oh. um, yeah. <laughs> so, and I know this was emailed out to us, but just for for others to let me read the letter. Should I read it because we're streaming live? Maybe. Um, so it says, dear Vermont community, the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence is coming. In 2020, Governor Scott established the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission to plan, encourage, develop, coordinate, and promote ob ob observances and activities to be able to Vermont commemoration of the historic events associated with the American Revolution. To this end, to this end <laughs> 200 ET 250th Commission will begin commemorations in 2025 with the capture of Fort Tiger, Conderoga, and Crown Point, and finish in 2027 with Vermont's signature anniversary year, making the founding of Vermont and the campaign of 1777, which included the battles of Hubbardton and Bennington. The commemorative milestone. <laughs> Sorry. The battle of Bennington always just gets me to stay in play. The commemorative milestone is an important time that provides the perfect platform to take stock of where we have been and to enable planning for our future. This three year anniversary period will allow all Vermont communities to share the histories, which include stories more diverse than are commonly known and can serve to unify all Vermonters. The Vermont 250th Commission encourages every community to take part, no matter how big or small the events or activities. How each town and city commemorates its history will be decided by your community. We invite you to join us as we commemorate the American Revolution and come together to mark the 250 years since this, the founding of our state and nation and our continuing march toward a more perfect union by adopting a resolution to be part of the 250th anniversary. Whoever wrote this was really good at run on sentences. A template has been provided for your consideration. The resolution declares that your town or city officials establishes Vermont 250th liaison or local committee made up of a diverse group of citizens to work, to work with Vermont 250th Commission on any events and activities related to the 250th anniversary. 
This will ensure your town or city to be directly involved in the work of the Vermont 250th Commission, as well as bring attention to the upcoming anniversaries for your community and help build awareness of the important role that Vermont, your town or city has contributed to our shared histories. We look forward to working with your town or city as you envision and implement a meaningful commemoration for your community for those upcoming anniversary events. Hmm. And they've provided a, a draft resolution. Anybody want to read this? Bill, do you want to move the speaker back to Kevin? Sorry. Yep. <laughs> I want to make sure you're heard. <laughs> I just read all that. Nobody. Can you read that? Can you start over? Do no. you know how many times it says 250th in there? Like 5,000 times. What do you think? Two, three, three. Starting to get used to this camera and not be this gun guy. Okay. So they've drafted a resolution that if we agree, we'd sign it. I guess I'll read the resolution. A resolution of the town of Chelsea, state of Vermont, supporting the Vermont Act. The Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission. Whereas Governor Scott did uh, did all those things I just read. Whereas Vermont Governor Phil Scott signed an executive order to create the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission on December 15, 2020, to plan, encourage, develop, coordinate, and promote observances and activities to be held in Vermont in commemoration of the historic events associated with the 250th anniversary of the 1776 signing of the Declaration of Independence. The Revolutionary War between 17. <laughs> like, like, I'm full of hot air. This sentence goes on. I have to take, I have to take like four breaths. Like, I'm sorry. The Revolutionary War between 1775 and 1777, the founding of Vermont, 1777, and the creation of the political foundations of the United States of America. Whereas the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission hopes to engage all 252 cities and towns through their many programs, projects, and events over the next several years, thereby inspiring future leaders and celebrating Vermonters' contributions to the nation over the last 250 years. Whereas by adoption of the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission, we hope to inspire Vermonters to learn from the history, legacy, and context of the past to build stronger communities for the future. Resolve, the town of Chelsea, officially establishes a liaison or local committees made up of a diverse group of citizens or individuals to work with the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission on any or all activities. The participa participants of the town of Chelsea are voluntary roles and there will be no compensation for participation. This is optional. Resolve, the town of Chelsea may provide funding for planning or implementation of 250th related commemorative commemorations in their community or region as available. Resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission, adopted by the Select Board of the Town of Chelsea, the State of Vermont, this second day of January 2024. That would be the resolution, if we so choose. But there is an option that if there's a motion to adopt this resolution, that the motion should include whether or not we want to provide funding. Oh, do we have to sign this tonight? I'm just, I'm just wondering if there are people in the community that would like to participate, in which case yeah. we could reach out and put it out to the public and see if there's anybody who feels strongly there's people who want to start a committee to do this and if there's interest then we sign it and if not we i'm just there may be people in the community that are passionate about it mm -hmm. yeah. i don't i don't think this is something that we're taking on so i think figuring out if other people are right. willing to before we just back on it do we know yeah, the, the, the I, I don't disagree. The question is two, two thoughts. One thought and the question. How about that? One thought is I don't think this is binding us signing it saying we're supporting the Vermont 250th Commission. And if we sign it, then we could say, hey, we've signed on and we support this. Is there a liaison in town that wants to be a liaison or a committee? And I don't know what the question was. 
and find oh my question was like fact, what's that and find that person after the fact and in the worst case scenarios we signed on and said we support the Vermont 250th commission worst case scenarios we don't have a liaison sure i, I don't i don't so care i just get lost in the shuffle yeah, yeah. well yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where i was thinking like we just read it and it's you don't want to read it again. We have to go through this again. You have to read it. So you decide. <laughs> I'm, just not it no, I'm just kidding. It's not about it. I could go either way. Yeah. I mean, I think it's essentially the same thing. It's whether we look for people interested before, before or after. I just sort of in my mind, if we sign it, I feel like we have to do something to commemorate those dates and participate. I think we just maybe the historical it's, society would be interested in. Should we reach out to them and be like, hey, do you guys have interest in doing anything with this? I know someone on the historical society I could ask her. Is that Emily? If I remember. <laughs> Emily's on the historical society. As a, as a social studies teacher in town, maybe she'd be interested in being a lady. Oh my gosh, oh, that, that would be, be fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. I would be willing yeah. to participate. Can we just some, but I don't want to take like the reins. I will put hours in and like I'll put things and go to a meeting. We should just assign it to her. <laughs> There's a con I have a conflict of interest, so I'm gonna I'm gonna recuse myself from that, but if the board wishes they can. <laughs> I think it would be great for the social studies class. Yeah. So do we want to hold on this? I think we should hold and okay. we should remind you to ask her. That is important. <laughs> should, I, should I Facebook message her to ask you about it later? Actually, no, you can you could just add, <laughs> you ask her. I actually need to ask her about something else, so I will actually ask her. Okay. Um Oh, digitization RFP approval. When do you want the next? When do you want sure. um, We'll put it on the January 16th. 16th. Yes. Thank you, Karen. 16th. Yeah, because it should just be quick. Yeah. Um, we kept putting it off, putting it off. Um, I haven't changed anything that except the dates. The dates uh, I proposed uh, would not allow us to put it out as a sealed bid in it under our purchase policy. If it's a big enough item that has to be sealed bid, unless you guys say no. <laughs> uh, I'm I missed that part. The RFP for digitization yep. comes under major purchase. Yep. Which means we have to get three sealed bids. Yep. And it needs to be noticed in the paper. Yes. I can't do that by January 9th. I just don't think there's enough time. What, what, is, it, what, what is January 9th? That's the original day I proposed to put this RFP out. Oh, the you thing, just changed the I just changed the date on this. Oh, okay. Sorry. To, to March 6th, March 12th. Oh, okay. Okay, so it would fall in line with one of our meetings. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh -huh. after town meeting, yes, because we'll be busy bless, until bless you. Uh, so we don't need to do it until that. Okay. But I just do need you to approve that we're going to send this RFP out as a motion. I move sending out the digitization RFP. Prepared by Karen. Yes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, I just have one comment on these minutes. We need to change $300,000 for the line of credit that Gail had talked to us about to $350,000. Okay. <laughs> but otherwise, with those changes. And we need to change the $50. Oh, yeah. okay, right. <coughs> so I move to approve the minutes from December 19th, 2023 with the adjustment of the $350,000 line of credit instead of 
the written 300,000 and update the Orange County Sheriff's hourly fee, not $58 per hour, but $58 per hour instead. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next on the agenda is. Sorry, let me make it back to you. Is there a motion on the orders? And we have to approve orders. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next on the agenda is executive session, if necessary. Um, I know we do have some applicants for the. Let, let, let me just ask: Do folks see a need for executive session? I thought that there was a need for executive session for personnel. Yes. Okay. I move to enter executive session. For so, uh, the, 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 I like just to. And do we also want to discuss the town administrator? I guess that would fall under personnel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. 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 My, my apologies. I need to enter executive session to discuss personnel and then invite Karen. A second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So at 9 11 p.m., we will enter executive session.
No, there needs to be a motion. There needs to be a motion to leave executive. Session, right? I move to leave executive session. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Just to summarize for those that are listening, um, executive session, uh, we discussed several personnel matters. We made no decisions. Uh, one item that we did discuss was moving forward with interviews for the town administrator position, which we will do. So that is it in summary. And the last item on our agenda tonight. Move to adjourn. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.